Uh, BIPA is a, is a public enterprise, so we report to the Ministry of Industrialization and Trade. So we have actually two mandates as BIPA. Uh, we, on one side, we register businesses, and on the other side, we register and protect intellectual property rights. So we make sure that, you know, we, we are here to actually to make sure that the innovation, the people who are innovative, the creators, they are, their rights are protected, you know, their intellect is protected by BIPA, you know, and that their creative works is not just idle out there, but, you know, they are, it's here to be protected by the law and so forth. So basically those are our two mandates. Well, what are the main objectives of the proposed draft amendment to the industrial property regulations? So basically the main objective is really like you, like you um, just introduced and said, streamlining the process, making sure the process is, is efficient, it's effective, it's customer need, it's responsive and it's efficient because, you know, the process has been, uh, we actually did a, a workflow analysis of our process and we came to understand that it's actually a multiple process, it's cumbersome, it's frustrating to our clients. And also, um, in terms of efficiency in our our office, it's also really, it's lacking on that side. So the main purpose of it is just to really streamline it, make it efficient, effective, you know, make it really easy for the customers as our stakeholders. So the main, that's, a, this, that's basically the main objective, just to make it easy. Mm-hmm. Now, okay. how will the consolidation of uh, fees improve the efficiency of intellectual property registration in the country? Um, it, will, it, it will really significantly improve it in the sense that, you know, um, like I said, the, the current process, like a client is at least expected to come to our office three times on our account or just one application. That is very cumbersome. Business people are very busy people. They don't have time to, you know, time is money, as they say. And business people don't have time to come in and out. So at least um, the, the current structure really, really requires the client to come in about three times and and this is frustrating and and frustrating for both sides actually. So the main purpose of it is to just improve the turnar- turnaround time for actually granting the intellectual property and also just consolidate the the process. So we have three processes: application process, publication process, and registration process. So each process has its own transaction. So the cons- the main purpose of it is just to consolidate it and make the application, publication, and registration process as one one-step process, or just one process that a client come in as one transaction, and this will actually really do, will input a turnaround time in terms of, of, of granting intellectual property rights. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think you have just answered my question because I wanted to, uh, I wanted you to elaborate a little bit on the kind of challenges or inefficiencies that you are aiming to address uh, with this amendment. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the draft mentions that the changes are designed to reduce turnaround times for registration. How significant are the current delays and how will this amendment help to expedite the process? Thank you so much, Moka. So basically, the, um, the turnaround time, we, for example, for one of our intellectual property, which is a trademark, um, a brand, um, the turnaround time has been estimated to be about 43 days. So this is not even after one has received, it's not even before the mark has been published because the mark has to be published for any potential parties to oppose. So basically this 43 days is not even, it hasn't even reached that process. It's just at the application process. So it can take about 43 days because a client is the one who has to take that proactive approach to always come back to BIPA. Obviously, we will obviously alert them, but if a client consistently has to come in and out, it's frustrating. So the turnaround time is about 43 days. So with the streamlining, with the, with the consolidation, at least it will be significantly even in, uh, uh, reduced to even 10 days just to um, make sure the application process is well, you know, uh, 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 well streamlined. Mm-hmm. So that's basically the turnaround time. It, it, it's a, quite a significant uh, 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 decrease. Right. Well... Uh, BIPA also hosts uh, stakeholder consultation workshops. Tell us more about these workshops uh, in terms of who attends and what kind of input uh, they are expected uh, to give during these uh, stakeholders' meetings. 
Yes, so we uh, we did actually host a few. We hosted one in Rundu and one in Valves Bay. We are going to be hosting one in Bintuk next week, the 1st of October, until the whole of October. Uh, basically, the whole the entire October, we will have some regional consultation. So basically, the, the our uh, stakeholders, uh, our key stakeholders are basically, it's our business community, our general public, our IP practitioners, you know, Really, these are the key players who can really contribute to the to the improvement of our IP field regulations because they are the end users. So the type of inputs we're actually expecting is just you know inputs that can really really improve uh, uh, the the revision. Any any we're really welcoming any inputs that can really uh, make sure that this this uh, um, revision is 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 good, it's efficient, it makes sense to everybody. So it's just basically. Um, Inputs that really contribute to the benefit of of the um, regulations to just improve the amendments to keep them really up on par with good standards and and, and in terms of yeah efficiency and streamlining yes those are the inputs mm-hmm. and why is it so important for businesses for creators and for the general public to engage um, with these amendments? Hey, yes, it's really actually important because they are the end users. Because at the end of the day, they are the ones who will be making the fees. They are the ones who will be who will be coming to to to. They are the ones who will be entering into the transactions and and making the necessary payments uh, and applying for the necessary relevant intellectual property. So actually, they are they are engagement and their proactive engagement in this is really, really uh, appreciated. It's welcomed. We really, really want them to make the comments. We want them to contribute and really play in really improving our IPC regulations. You know, so they're the end users. It's very important. We really have this, this, these regulations are actually at the heart of our key stakeholders. So yes, mm. they are the most important. Well, the deadline for submitting comments is the 31st of October. How can people go about submitting their comments and is there an easy way for them to access the draft amendment? Yes, thank you. So basically, um, um, they uh, another way to actually forward their comments is by email, info at bipa.na. Those are, that's actually one of the, the platforms that they can use. Uh, the draft is, is actually accessible on our BIPA website and also with our stakeholders that are stakeholding uh, consultations that are coming up. One in Vintuk, the others are going to be within the regions in Namibia. So basically, that's where we'll also be uh, receiving inputs or comments from our stakeholders and consolidating them and putting them together. So uh, I think 31st of October is an ample time to really get the public engaged, get the public really, uh, you know, proactive in this in this engagement. So that's how we'll be actually, yeah, consolidating, welcoming the comments. Yeah. And just in closing, how does BIPA now plan to handle the feedback that it receives? And uh, will there be further opportunities for public engagement before the amendment is finalized? So basically, yes, we'll be just consolidating them through our various uh, 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 channels. Like I said, the stakeholder engagements, the emails they can they, they, they can send to. And we'll be basically taking all the comments, consolidating them, and ensure that the, the draft amendment is a piece of legislation, uh, is a, a, a piece of legislation that is really responsive to the customer needs, and it, it really takes into account the comments of the various key stakeholders. So um, basically, taking into consideration that uh, the deadline is 31st of October, I think this is actually ample time for, for like I said, for the stakeholders to really, really uh, take a proactive approach. So. Uh, we're just keeping it until the 31st of October and consolidating all the comments and from there on it will be closed. So I think this is a right time to really use this opportunity until the 31st of October to, to make the necessary comments.